heaven. This is Sid Gibbons, and this is his mom. And this is the reason they're looking so glum. Sid's dinner was on the table before, but now it's an upside down tea on the floor. This isn't the first time that Sid's been in trouble. On Monday, his bowl turned the bird bath to rubble. On Tuesday, his pens were left out to go dry. On Wednesday, his bedroom looked like a pigsty. Mom folded her arms as she spoke spoke to the lad. Now, Sydney, remember the talk that we had? But Sid, he was hatching a plan in his head, and before she could finish, the little chap said, "I didn't do it. I'm innocent, Sid." But if you'll just listen, I'll tell you who did. Kevin, yes, that's right, Kevin. He did it. Why don't you just ask him? He'll have to admit it. Mum was confused as she looked at the chair. It was quite plain to see that there was no Kevin there, as satisfied Sid simply stood there and smiled. Well, what does he look like? said Mum to the child. Um, he's ever so tall, and he's ever so wide, and ever so smiley. The little boy lied. He only has one tooth that is as strong as a gorilla, has lots of pink spots on a fur of a vanilla. Whenever I'm down with that sad. Lonely feeling. He comes down to stay through the hatch in my ceiling. He's kind, but he's clumsy, and that, I'm afraid, is why he's to blame for the mess that's been made. Mom rolled her eyes. Her cheeks went bright red. That's enough, Sydney. Now please go to bed, and have a good thing, 'cause these fibs have to end. You must not blame your mess on a make-believe friend. Grumpy Sid made his way up the stairs and put on his PJs, the one with bears. He sat in the darkness, his mood not improving. When slowly the door to the hatch started moving, suddenly light flooded in through the chink, which Sid could have sworn was vanilla and pink. Excited and nervous all at the same time, he took a deep breath and he started to climb. When he got to the top, what a sight to be hall! Just look at that sky, what a fine shade of gold! The tree trunks were purple, the leaves made of jelly, the flowers were huge and incredibly smelly. The clouds were all star-shaped. The rainbow was dotty. The ladybird stripy. The bumblebee spotty. The grass was a carpet of mint green and yellow. And who's this familiar sort of a fellow? Kevin, you're Kevin," said Sid with a squeal. "I cannot believe that you're actually real. You're just like my drawing. No need to pretend." We'll play every day. You can be my best friend. Kevin just smiled and took Sid by the hand, and they started to walk through this magical land. They passed lots of beasties that looked pretty silly. Some hairy, some slimy, some leggy, some frilly. Sid smiled and said hi, as. Each one came toward him, but oddly, the strange creature, featured creatures, ignored him. Big red, little blue, the one shaped like a kidney. They nodded to Kev, but they looked straight through Sydney. By the time they had rocked up at Kevin's front door, the facts of the matter were hard to ignore. 
here in Kev's world, I'm sure you were seeing, it was Sydney who was the imaginary being. Now I have to report with a slight note of dread that Sydney was hatching a plan in his head. Oh, a plan oh so cheek, so tricksy, so clever. Invisible Sid, bestest fun ever. Are you catching my drift? Do you see what I mean? You can't get told off if you cannot be seen. So Sid scribbled on the walls and he scribbled on the floors. He bounced on the beds and he swung from the doors. He hosed down the dog and he frightened the hens. He left all the lids of Kevin's new pens. What then, and when it was a tea time, Invisible Sid, well, look to your right and you'll see what he did. Just as Kev started to clean up the floor, in walked his dad through the wrecked kitchen door. Slowly but surely, his cheeks went bright red. That's enough, Kevin, now please go to bed. It was then that Sid noticed as Kevin walked by a single blue tear welling up in his eye. Suddenly, Sidney did not feel so clever. He actually felt like the least best friend ever. He went up the stairs full of sorrow and guilt where he found t Kevin tucked under his quilt. Kevin, Sid whispered, oh, Kevin, stop crying. I've been really selfish, there is no denying. I'm terribly sorry, I've got you in trouble. I'm going to put right all my wrongs at the double. So Sid scrubbed all the walls and he scrubbed all the floors. He mended the bed and he fixed all the doors. He brushed on the dog and he settled the hands. He tidied away all of Kevin's new pens. And then he gave Kevin a card that he'd made. My drawing is not very good, I'm afraid. But I hope that you like it and you find in your heart a way to be friends like we were at the start. Kevin just smiled and he gave Sid a cuddle. They were both, and there they both stood in that big teardrop puddle. Kevin showed Sid the way back to the hatch. They said their goodbyes as Sid unhooked the hatch. But before he went down, a reformed Sidney Gibbons collected some flowers and tied them with ribbons. Back in his room, Sidney got himself dressed. When he ran down the stairs, flower clutched to his chest. He dashed through the house from one room to another. At last in the kitchen, our Sid found his mother. Mom, I'm sorry for causing such trouble. I'm the one who turned the birth bag to rubble. I messed up my room and ruined my pens. I should not blame it all on my innocent friends. And then Sydney gave her the beautiful posy. And Mom was so happy her cheeks went all rosy. Now this is Sid Gibbons. And this is his mom. And there on the slide is our invisible chum. Since Sid learned his lesson and stopped blaming others, Kevin and I, him, have been closer than brothers. I wonder if you have a make-believe friend, an invisible pal upon one you depend. If no one believes you, don't grumble or moan, because one thing's for certain... You're not on your own. The end.